Hey guys, welcome to the another topic of discussion today that is ASA difficult airway algorithm in adults. Hey guys, if you are new to my channel, please subscribe my channel and if you like my videos, push a thumbs up button so that it will motivate me for doing more videos for you guys. So let's discuss today ASA difficult airway algorithm. First, if the patient having any difficult airway, you should suspect if there is any suspected difficulty in laryngoscopy. This is the first step. So before the pre-intubation, there is some steps have to be taken by the clinician who is involved in the case. What pre-intubation steps you have to take is actually either whether you are planning for awake intubation or you are planning for post induction post you induce the patient and then intubate post induction intubation either awake intubation or post induction intubation so this how will you decide is by looking of these parameters first parameter difficulty in laryngoscopy yes then you have to look for any difficulty in mask ventilation difficulty in ventilation by using either face mask or supraglottic airway devices either of this if there is any difficulty in ventilation if yes if there is no difficulty in ventilation then you have to look for there is any increased risk of aspiration if anything is there so there is no risk of aspiration then consider for is there any increased risk of rapid desaturation So, you have to look all these parameters. Whenever suspect difficulty in laryngoscopy, then look for any difficulty in ventilation in the patient with face mask or supraglottic airway device or any increased risk of aspiration or increased risk of rapid desaturation in this patient or there is any emergency airway requirement. The patient will land up in emergency airway, that is invasive airway, emergency invasive airway assessment if there is required during the procedure if the suspected difficult laryngoscopy is there and there is no difficulty with all of this then you can correctly proceed with the patient with induction intubation strategy induction and intubation that is post induction and intubation strategy is the best induction of choice suppose if you are landed up in patients having suspected difficult laryngoscopy yes and there is difficulty in ventilation and difficulty the patient having increased risk of rapid desaturation is there and there is increased risk of aspiration is there then you have to go for an which type of intubation is awake intubation in this type of patient awake intubation is preferred okay so if awake intubation if the patient is preferred if it is success okay then proceed uh, with that if awake intubation fails in this patient then consider any alternative strategies for intubation alternative strategies you have kept in mind of uh, intubation you have to try that alternative strategies if that also of alternative strategies of intubation also fails then awaken the patient sorry uh, so not awake the patient is already awake no so just just postpone the case if it is not an emergency procedure suppose if there is nothing point is there then post induction intubation you have planned and in this post induction intubation we will induce the patient with inducing agents and then in try to intubate the patient if intubation is possible in this patient success means okay there is no problem suppose if it fails intubation fails then limit the attempts limit the attempts of intubation and call for help okay but meanwhile in both the cases awake intubation if it fails or if the patient induction intubation if it fails optimize oxygenation throughout this is the most important 
with nasal or O2 at 15 liters per minute optimize the oxygenation throughout the procedure if it success of its optimize oxygenation throughout the procedure this is most important so you have limit the attempts and call for help okay so then you have to assess if a if a starter a call for help and face mask whether ventilation is adequate either with face mask ventilation is adequate or not you have to assess if ventilation is adequate then ventilation is yes it is adequate then you have to go for non-emergent pathway now this non-emergent pathways non-emergency pathway i will tell what are the pathways suppose if ventilation is inadequate no ventilation is not occurring good then these patients may have difficulty uh, then you have to go with supraglottic airway devices sad for ventilating the patient if supraglottic airway devices you have used if ventilation is adequate yes ventilation is there then there is uh, you just maintain the ventilation with that until help arrives if supraglottic airway devices also ventilation is not occurring well no ventilation is occurring then you have to think of can't ventilate and can't intubate when you landed up in this kind of situation can't ventilate and uh, can't intubate uh, situation then you have to either go for an you they have to go for emergent pathway because already you have handled so many things with the patient airway then emergent pathway here again call for help for invasive as call for help for surgical airway like tracheostomy or you have do alternate with the capo cricotherotomy needle cricotherotomy other things and also you have to call for the surgical emergency tracheostomy if any plan and consider alternative procedures emergency pathway also consider alternative procedures if it gains success then okay if it is not there then go for surgical airway either tracheostomy needle thoracotomy where ventilation you can maintain and then final tracheostomy is the final thing in non-emergent pathway in this condition what is what you are doing is patient is able to ventilate patient is ventilating but not able to intubate so when you landed with this kind of situation what will you know just awaken optimize that means limit the attempts and awaken the patient if you are awake the patients okay if you are trying alternative procedure if it success okay if it fails then again you will be landed up with can't ventilate can't intubate emergency pathway you have to go for then emergency surgical that is needle uh, cricotherotomy or surgical tracheostomy is the final procedure so what are the things to discuss Whenever it is a difficult airway algorithm, pre-intubation you have to decide whether it is an awake intubation or post-induction intubation strategy. Whenever there is difficult in laryngoscopy, then you have to assess difficulty in ventilation with the face mask SAD. Whether there is increased risk of any aspiration is there or increased risk of rapid desaturation is there. Then if all the things is no, there is no risk, no risk of this and no difficulty in ventilation, only difficulty in laryngoscopy then go with induction intubation strategy and if it is suspected difficult in laryngoscopy no then go for induction intubation strategy so induction with you know inducing agents you intubate the patient try to intubate if intubation is success okay if it fails then limit the attempts call for the help maintain ventilation with face mask you can assess the ventilation with the help of etco2 adequate mask ventilation is occurring with the help of etco2 here Okay. if mod ventilation is adequate then you will be landed up with patient is ventilating but not able to intubate so go for non-emergent pathway if ventilation is inadequate then go for supraglottic airway device if supraglottic airway device is in place then uh, if you are able to ventilate okay maintain the ventilation until help arrives if you are not able to ventilate with supraglottic airway device then can't ventilate can't intubate go for emergency pathway that is call for help for surgical access and needle cricotherotomy or surgical tracheostomy is the final option non-emergent pathway if means 
you can go limit the atoms and may awaken the patients with the non emergent pathway okay suppose if the patient have suspect difficult laryngoscopy yes and they have difficulty in ventilation increases of aspiration increases of desat and there is emergency airway requirement in this condition awake intubation you have to try if it is success okay if it fails then alternative strategies which you get kept as a plan b or plan c you have to try and if it also fails then postpone the case okay but throughout the procedure optimize oxygenation that is the main goal of maintaining the oxygenation throughout the procedure of difficult airway so this is the ac difficult airway algorithm and others we will be discussing the in pediatrics and the different uh, situation where difficult airway management in the forthcoming videos guys and if you like my videos just put a thumbs up button and uh, so that it will motivate me for doing more videos for you guys thank you guys please subscribe my channel thank you